I am Sanitil. I am here uh, today to talk about this efficient and sustainable agro process. These are the contents what, uh, which I would like to uh, discuss about uh, in this presentation. Nature of hormonal fiber, pre-treatment, that is a fiber preparation and the cleaning system, experience and solutions, improvements, water and effluent reduction methods, and the standard concept and pitch market. Hardwood fiberized versus non-wood fiber pulp. The chemical composition of uh, uh, bagas and uh, sweet straw is similar to this hardwood, but slightly lower lignin and the lower cellulose content. Major difference in non-wood fiber fiber compared to this hardwood that it is having a different cooking process. We take about this uh, 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 non-wood fiber like uh, uh, bagas or wheat straw. We want to use this. Uh, horizontal clip tester and it has very lower cooking return cooking time. It's around the 22 25 minutes returns and time. And this annual fiber it has very poor drainage properties compared to hardwood. Because of this one, we have to use this uh, very big equipment because the loading factor if we take for uh, bagas, it takes uh, around the 2.5 uh, tons per meter square. But whereas if we take a hardwood pulp, it, it takes around 7 to 8 tons per square meter. That's why this you need very big equipment for using this uh, washing equipment. If we, whereas if we take a V straw, the further it is very poor uh, drainage properties compared to uh, even bagas. This, uh, uh, this loading factor it will be around 1.5 to 2 tons per uh, square meter for V straw uh, washing equipment. And major the Another issue is the silica content. For the bagas and the uh, waste straw, it's having a higher silica content compared to hardwood. So that's why this we have to remove the silica before taking the cooking process. But whereas if we take this uh, screening and bleaching, this is almost similar to this hardwood pulp. For the screening and this bleaching, we have to use a similar type of equipment for what we are using for the hardwood pulp or hardwood pulp. Nature of bagas and waste straw. Bagas, I think everybody is aware that the bagas is the solid fibrous material that is left after this extraction of juice from sugar cane. As Mr. Uh, Rastogi told today morning, the most of these uh, uh, mills, the sugar mills, they are using the bagas for uh, generating the steam and power. But only this uh, few paper industries they are using for uh, making a uh, uh, pulp from this uh, bagas. If we take 10 tons of sugar cane, it uh, produces uh, 3 tons of whole bagas. Bagas contains 53% of uh, fiber and 40% of the pith and 1% of silica. So this is the pith is the, it is having almost 40%. So this is the, one of the most important that we should take it uh, before taking to this uh, cooking process. We hope to remove this pith content as much as possible before taking the cooking process. The reason is that, that, that I can explain for the slides. So then another is the silica, that 1% silica. If we take wheat straw, wheat uh, straw is having the major issues that almost 4.5 to 5% of the silica content. This is one of the most major issues in the for making the pulping process. Then normally the silica content is very higher in the leaves than the other parts. So that's why it's difficult to remove the silica, but we have that, uh, some technology or we have the system to remove the silica. And the north portion, that is a very strong fiber uh, bundles compared to other uh, pores. So that normally creates this more size and that. That's why uh, north also we have to take it away before taking to this uh, cooking process. The pit and silica are the major problems in the armor fiber. If we take pit content, it consumes more chemical consumption. Because that is not fiber, that is like a sponge. So that will consume the more key chemicals. And that, because of it, that your drainage properties also it will be very, very low. Then you need this uh, a very large equipment of, uh, for washing. That is also sometimes if you are having more uh, spit, then it is very difficult to wash it. So we have to remove the spit before taking to the cooking, uh, before the cooking process. Spit also reduces the yield. Then the spit also it will reduce the strength of the paper. So that's why the pit is major uh, role for uh, 
making this cooking a process for the bagas. So we want to remove the filth as much as possible in the in the bagas. If we take about silica content, silica increases this uh, wear on the machinery and it, that is increase the solid waste and hand, handling the increase the solid handling cost. So how to remove the pit and silica? These are the major challenges for the onward fiber. Reducing the pit content and the reducing the set content. And another one is also the bagas storage and preservation. So this is a typical wet, wet washing system for bagas. If you see here, we have this deep pitting section, then we have bagas storage, then after that we have this wet washing system. Then we have the dewatering for this, uh, that is called aqua separator. So the purpose of the uh, deep filter, that to remove the pit, because when you take uh, a bagasse from the super factory, that contains 40% of the pit. So the deep filter, the purpose of deep filter to remove the pit, almost that it is not, it is not possible to remove 100% of the pit. It removes only 80% of the pit from the whole bagasse. The balance 20% of the pit we have to remove in the wet cleaning process. And another one important is that bagas storage. Normally bagas it will be stored in the wet piling process. But after this uh, storage, then we have to take around 22-25% of the dryness of this bagas that will be taken to the wet cleaning process. Wet cleaning process, we have normally the standard uh, equipment that is called storage tank and reclaimed cest. These are the two equipment, it's a, like a storage vessel that will remove the coarse sand particle. Then after that, the bagas will be taken to the destoner. In the destoner, uh, normally the mill use this mill air. The, when you are using the mill air in the destoner, that will create the turbulence. So when you are creating the turbulence on this bagas, so that the weight particle it will be settling in the bottom, then the, 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 the weightless particle will go in the upper direction. Then that will be overflowed with the wash meter. So that normally the destoner, it is not having many wheels, but only the few wheels are having this destoner. That is also one of the good equipment for removing this silica. Then uh, another equipment is called wash meter. So wash meter is like it is, has a multiple pedals. So when rotate with uh, uh, when, when rotate this, uh, when uh, create the turbulence of this uh, raw material, there, there are also this heavy particle is setting the bottom. Then bottom of this wash meter, it is having the timer operator balls. So based on the timer, then ball it will be open. Then we can empty out this uh, uh, whatever the settled uh, uh, sand content. So the clear uh, or uh, this clear or float, uh, this workflow that will be taken to the collection tank, from there it will be pumped into this uh, upper separator. So normally, upper separator means it's an inclined screw conveyor. It has this uh, shock, then outside there is have the perforated holes. So normally it will be around 1, 1 to 1.5% of this consistency, it will be uh, fit to this upper separator. So that the pit and the, the, whatever this uh, remaining pit comes along with the uh, like from, comes from this bagasse yeah, that will be removed in pit and then the same time it will be dewatered this 1% to uh, almost 18% to 20% of this uh, uh, dryness will get from this aqua separator. From the aqua separator then, then the raw material of bagasse will be taken to this uh, cooking process. This is a typical wet cleaning process for the bagasse. If we talk about this waste uh, uh, stock, almost it's a, a, a similar to this bagasse, but only the, some difference are that that is called like a stone cast and reclaimed cest and destroyer. Those things are not uh, using for the wet cleaning process because have this even uh, timer operate wall also in bottom. So then whatever is, uh, the fine silica that will be settled in the bottom, so then periodically you can empty out or you can open this wall, bottom wall with the uh, pneumatic wall, you can drain it. That is also one of the options that uh, you can remove this uh, settled fine silica from this collection tank. So the clear water, it will be overflowed to the settling pit. So this settling pit, we are using the settling pit, that's like a storage tank, and it has uh, multiple uh, two, three compartments. So in each compartment, compartment there will be a, a drain at bottom. So then here, normally the settling pit, this the settling pit will be sized based on the settling velocity. The based on this size, small size of uh, silica or fines or sand, so based on that, if this uh, settling glass will be calculated, then based on that, it will be size of the settings will be uh, uh, designed. But some mills, they are using the glass there also for, uh, instead of settling pit, uh, they are using the glass there also for removing this uh, silica, fine silica. So then uh, the filtered water or clear, uh, clear, clear water, it will be overflowed to this uh, clarified water cess. So from there, the, it will be pumping back to this wet process. From the, for diluting this waste or bagasse, 
from this 25 percent of dryness to this uh, one plus uh, two percent. That, is, that, that means we are completely recirculating this entire water. Only small amount of filtered water will be purged out from this uh, system because otherwise, if you are not purging out, what will happen? The COD will be accumulated and it will be issue. That's why we have to purge out normally 5 percent of this uh, filtered water will be purged out. You have put the make up fresh water, you have make up that. This is what uh, uh, typical uh, backwater treatment system we are having that. In the right hand side, you can see that. Uh, this is what a similar type of, what type of this uh, road screen we are talking about. Then bottom there will be a collection tank. Then this is the settling tank. It has this, uh, sorry for uh, German, because you can not able to see that. Uh, then here we have this uh, uh, compartment. And then you can have this bottom also, you can able to remove this silica. And the clear water it will be collected to this collection tank. And uh, uh, one, of, one or two minutes, what we are doing that, whatever the collects, uh, collected with, from the rotor screen that will be taken to the small tank. From there, it will be pumped to this uh, belt press. So there, it will be consensus. You may get around this uh, 10, uh, 15 to 20 percent consensus. We get the pit. Then that pit will again it will be taken to this screw press. There, we get the dryness around 60 percent, 60 percent of the dryness. So that uh, pit it will there directly taken to this boiler pass of fuel. So this is also using one mill in India for uh, using this pit as your fuel in the power buyer. So important to, important to know, if you are storing the bagas in the longer periods, what happens? It will has a severe color degradation and yield will be less and the degrades of fiber properties. That's why we should not store it in the longer time. So it will be recommended that we should use it only three to six months. And the other is that I already told that uh, we want to bagas normally to be stored in the weight by my third. So it will be around 80 to 80% uh, of this uh, mitral candle will be stored in the uh, in the Pagasya. And one more thing, uh, what we should put, uh, I, I can explain about the experience one of the mill in the Argentina, where I am talking about this proper uh, dry and wet cleaning process. If you are not having the proper dry and wet cleaning process or removing the pit and silica, then you cannot be able to run the pipeline process. So that is most important that we should have the proper dry and wet cleaning process. And uh, some more things also we are looking out, but now uh, it is in the uh, in the trial uh, level. We are uh, trying, if we are removing this uh, higher amount of silica, then yield is increasing. So we are having some different technology, like we are working out the desilication process with the sodium carbonate, and then we are uh, working out this leaching process with the uh, acid and the alkaline uh, uh, acid and alkali for removing this potassium and chloride and then this uh, silica that is also helping us to increase the yield and reducing the chemical consumption. That is under study now. Once we uh, get successes, uh, then we can able to uh, share that this result and we can able to implement it our system. So I would like to share here some experience and the challenges and what solution we have taken. But I would like to share that some two three cases. This is the one mill in India that this mill uh, having this completely press based uh, bagas line. It is having that uh, uh, diester, uh, horizontal twin diester. Then it's having that after cooking process, it's having the screen room, or such screen room. Then it's having the three stage washing section. Then we, uh, they have the single stage ordeal. After that, they have this uh, two stage post ordeal and this post ordeal washing. Then they have this three stage of this sequence, P0, EOP, and V1. So when we installed this mill, uh, we did not anticipate that the pit uh, actually, they have they are also having this very good uh, uh, dry cleaning and wet cleaning process, but still the pit content it was more. That's why it's created this uh, uh, scaling and then this, uh, uh, it created the scaling and the poor deep watering and the washing stage. So then, uh, after that, we have installed this high pressure shower cleaning on the uh, first stage press. Then it was uh, rectified. And, and uh, uh, after the after cooking process, we are having immediately screen room. So what happened then, uh, it created this uh, sometimes plugging issue, then because of this higher content. Then uh, when you're taking this consistency more than this 3%, the cleaning of uh, sand also is not that much. So then, uh, we have introduced a lot of uh, cleaners on the screen room, then this uh, plant was uh, operated uh, well. So this is uh, what I want to say here. So normally when you have this cooking, after cooking, whether this onward, whether this bagas or this straw, it has 
the higher viscous because of pit it has the higher viscous so then if you are having after picking you are having a screen room it is very difficult to uh, clean this uh, uh, the sand or it will be the size because of higher viscous so this is recommended to have this one better washing if you want to have this one washing then you should have a screen room when you are having this better washing then you should to clean this uh, uh, um, unwound fiber So this is what I would like to say here. Why I recommend that strongly that you should have the proper wet dry and wet clean system. This is one mill in uh, Argentina. The mill name is Ladasma. This mill actually we have supplied only this uh, cooking and the uh, fiber area, they, but they did not have the proper uh, wet cleaning and process. Because of that one, you can see in the bottom of the slide how much this big sands and the uh, sand and the silica and everything you can see here. So we could not able to run the fiber line. Then later on, what we did that because of this issue, we recommended to install this uh, cleaning process. Still, what we decided that, and then we have moved the screen room after the washing section. You see here in the bottom uh, bottom bottom portion of this uh, slide, we have uh, this is what we have modified. Initially, it was installed the screen room, then wash plan. Later on, we have modified to this wash plan. Before the wash plan, we have introduced the sand rippler. The purpose of the sand rippler is to remove these uh, big stones and everything before taking to this washing equipment. That's what we installed. Then we have moved the screen room after the wash plant. Then the plant was uh, running very good. This is another one mill. This, this is completely 100% uh, the visual based fiber line. This mill is having the combination of the uh, washers and the press. This is the one mill having a good, uh, good concept. What, what, what based on this experience, what we had in the earlier installation, so in this mill we, in, we consider this uh, washing, two shade washing uh, before the screen room. After that, we install the screen room here. Then we have this uh, washing, one more washing after the screen room for increasing the consistency. Then we have one press. After that, we have a single stage modium. Then this uh, three stage music sequence that is called DGO EOPI D1. But this mill is working good because it is not having the much issue of both the, uh, the pit and other uh, dust particle. So, based on this experience from the various mills what we installed, we have uh, done this lot of uh, uh, study in our lab, R and D uh, laboratory. Then we have created some improvements. If we take about this printer reader, whatever in India, so far we are having the two drum printer press, print drum. Now we have uh, done, we have uh, modified, we have uh, created the one new equipment that is having this three rolls on the printer printer. The purpose of these three rolls, so here it will give a uniform feeding to this nest equipment, then it will have a lower energy consumption and it have a less wear out. And then we have the blowback system. When you are calling this to a horizontal fluid register, if your feed is not uniform, you are not having this uh, enough material to the flexible feeder, it happened always the flow that. So that, uh, that we cannot avoid. So what we do, for that we should have the uniform feeding to this uh, flexible feeder. So that is also sometimes it's not possible because we are loading this uh, bagas and we straw to uh, load up manually, that is not possible. So then, uh, that creep, when you are having the flow back, then we are losing the production because of surround time. So for that case, we have uh, done some modification, we created some new equipment that is called active flow back camper. So what does it mean? So this active flow back camper, we are continuously giving some pressure to this flow back camper. It will be against this uh, uh, bagas, to, uh, against uh, towards the bagas. So then, whenever this uh, Bagas or waste straw, it is uh, coming less than the pressure is uh, less means immediately this blowback camera is closed. But whereas if we take the present wheel, uh, present uh, uh, blowback camera, what we are having in India, this always this uh, blowback uh, damper is in the uh, almost in the rear end. Whenever this uh, torque, what uh, we are getting the lower torque from the cluster feeder, then only start to close this uh, damper. By the time you will get the blowback. But whereas in this case, uh, it will close immediately uh, when this uh, uh, low feed comes because it is giving some pressure to us to the uh, plant. So that will reduce this one downtime and then you can avoid losing the present time. 
Then uh, we have created this one new equipment called Force Field Screw. In India, we don't have this equipment. The purpose of uh, creating the equipment, normally we take this bagasse or vista, the density of uh, bagasse it will be around maybe 6 to 70 kg per meter. If we take a uh, vista, it will be around 35 to 40 kg per meter cube. But when you are having this force speed screw before the plus screw feeder, the density of uh, onward fiber, whether uh, a bagasse or vista, that can be reached up to 200 kg per meter cube. When you are having this much of compaction, and after that you feed to the plus screw, then you can able to increase this uh, capacity when you are running plant without having much uh, investment. So capacity can be increased by having this equipment. Same time, this blow by capacity will be reduced. But this, uh, when you are having the density, the compaction is more, then you are having the very less of blowback. So that is also a major advantage for having this equipment. Then uh, in the plus screw feeder, we have created the new uh, spiral throat type, uh, throat type of plus screw. When you have the spiral type of uh, throat, it has the less energy consumption and less wear out. When you have the less energy consumption, you can save a lot of energy and uh, then this life of this plus screw also will be increased to more than one year. I think normally it will be around six months for the plus screw, but in this case you can able to run around one year uh, this, this type of uh, spiral throat. Then uh, in earlier days, we used to have a screw conveyor after this uh, press for diluting the pulp 30% to 12% uh, or 7% how much you want. But now we have removed this uh, screw conveyor. Instead of, instead of screw conveyor, we have, uh, we have created the new equipment that is called vertical dilution device. So here there is no any energy structure. This is like a normal tooth with uh, some dilution. So that is also uh, working well and in India also many mills are having this, uh, recent mills are having this type of vertical dilution device. So now the school can wear smart record for this uh, uh, diluting the pump. Then uh, we are having that uh, electrical equipment. Uh, I think people uh, who are all operating the press, uh, so far they are having this uh, hydraulic equipment that consumes this more energy. But uh, now we have created this uh, electrical equipment. So that is almost less, 50% of less energy compared to this hydraulic fiber. That is also in India recently, we are having this electrical driven also. And then uh, this uh, electrical driven reduces this uh, cooling rate water recommend also compared to hydraulic fiber. Another one important topic today morning also, we have discussed many things about water and the full reduction methods. Our bad solutions help uh, to reduce the, to reduce and reuse and recycle to ensure it's more sustainable tomorrow. So we uh, we have the best available techniques to reduce this uh, raw material and the energy and the water consumption and the same whatever reduce we can reuse also. That well, that technology with that technology we have done some uh, modification in our technology that we, I can able to tell about. If we take about this uh, bleach plant effluent global, uh, globally, if we take about Asia, Europe, and South, South America, okay. it is having that very lower uh, bleach plant effluent. If you see that here in this graph, it is having 5 meter cube per ton of pulp to 10 meter cube per ton of pulp. And if we take about North America, it is having lower value is 29 meter cube per ton of pulp, whereas the maximum is 68 meter cube per ton of pulp. What is the reason? Why this uh, uh, other uh, countries are having this lower water consumption compared to North America? Because North America still they are running with uh, the old technology, water based. That is one reason. Second is that still they are using many mills of open loop system. The open loop, uh, loop system means they are not recirculating this uh, liquor from this uh, system, the bleach plant or the ODM. So that is the reason uh, this, still they are operating this, uh, they are having the higher effluent generation compared to this Asia and Europe and South America. In India also, one mill, uh, one or two mills, I don't want to tell the name, but one or two mills still they are reached up to 4.5 to 5 meters to come up of this kind of land. But some mills, they are uh, trust this pipeline, they are running around 8 to 9 meters to come up, but two mills, they are having this 4 to 5, 4 to 4 to 5 to 5 meters to come up of this kind of land. This is one of the topic, uh, even the sun mills uh, still in India also, uh, we are not considering this one, the open cooling system and the closed uh, cooling system. What does means open cooling system? When 
we are we are having this in paper industry we are we need cooling water filling water dm water 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 but what uh, some is doing they are not differentiating this what is mean of cooling water where we, we where we should use the cooling water where we use the milk water where we use this uh, dm water always they are using the same milk water for all the applications if are using that type of this uh, uh, uh this all the milk water milk water for all the applications then you will end up with the uh, excess usage of uh, water and the excess usage of the uh, excess generation of the milk kind of plant so in this case first of all we should decide where we ought to use the cooling of water the means uh, where we are going to get the temperature around 40 to 45 degrees celsius maximum 50 degrees celsius there we ought to use the cooling water then the same cooling water return water we can take cooling water cooling tower then we can recirculate it but if that water goes to this hot water tank what happens hot water tank we get around 75 to 80 degrees celsius so mixing with the 40 degree or 50 degree celsius to the hot water uh, tank what happens you are what already this hot water temperature what you are having some temperature degree that will be further go down then you have to post to use this steam help steam to maintain the temperature 70 degree 75 degree for odl and bleach plant so that's why we should know that where we should use the cooling water and where we should use for other milk water so there we have to get this higher hot water uh, temperature than we have to use the milk water and then we have to use it uh, storage separately in the hot water tank and otherwise what we can do that we can have separate warm water tank wherever we are having low temperature 40 to 50 degrees celsius we can have this, uh, separate warm water tank that can be stored that can be taken to this cooling tower then it can be separated in the system in this case you can able to save this uh, lot of excess uh, fresh water consumption and you can able to reduce this uh, lot of wastage or lot of draining of uh, fresh water then another one thing that now the technologies uh, as we discussed morning we have uh, keep on uh, developing the new technology now all uh, european mills or even this indian mills now recently what we re- uh, installed in the two three mills they are going for uh, eop circulation eop filtered water to this post over uh, stage why they are using that when you are using this uh, eop filtered water to post over stage you can able to uh, reduce this effluent uh, uh, generation 4 to 5 liter per hour but if you are using this uh, without eop uh, filtered water this first volume then uh, we uh, we uh, generate this bleach pond plant as 7 to 8 meter cube per ton of water so if you are using this you uh, will filter water to first volume what happens there is a possibility of having this uh, more chloride content and potassium in the in the territory uh, area so what we should do so for that the technology is available there is a actually thing so that you can for small thing you can in investment you can invest this investment this actually thing then you can you can remove this potassium and chloride then you can able to uh, run this uh, completely uh, 100% percent uh, eop filtered water to this uh, post water process post water process so the technology is available so that is also in so so if you are reducing this uh, every ton of pulp around uh, 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 3 meter cube per ton of pulp then you can see how much cell saving of fuel and generation that how much you can able to uh, reduce the cost of for the effluent in plant so that you have to uh, think it about and uh, where you want uh, then you can be able to think it about for your uh, mill also using this actually uh, saying if you would like really like to this uh, reducing this bleach plant effluent another one thing is that uh, having this trust in the post body before the bleach plant it is having this lot of advantage if you see that this press in post water it work as a barrier when you are having the 30% of the pulp entering to the bleach plant you can able to reduce this sulfuric acid and you can able to reduce the chloride consumption because if we have the washer in the last stage what happen you take 10% to 12% consumption but you are not able to use this zero filtered water for diluting the pulp then you are that will be go back for the drain so the whatever the residual chlorine in the uh, effluent that will be go uh, it will go to the drain when you have this stress uh, in the last phase you have to dilute to 30% to 100% before entering the bleach plant 
and you can use this dehydrated uh, water or dehydrated water for diluting 30 percent, 12 percent. So then you can able to utilize this residual chlorine <coughs> for uh, uh, this diluting the bulk, and you can able to reduce the chlorine dust consumption in the visual stage. At the same time, when you are diluting the bulk 30 percent to 12 percent, you can able to reduce the sulfuric acid consumption also because. We are using already this 2% uh, of biggest filtered water to this diluting 30% uh, from 10.5 to this 2 uh, uh, then we can have to reduce some filters and just also. So that is one of the advantage. Second is that when you, when you are having the press as a barrier in the before bleach plant, from the 30% to 12%, you have to dial, you have to use this major filtered water and you want to this water. So that 50% of this acid filtered water also you can be able to reduce it. That means that will be taken for this dilution. So then your bleach plant effluent also will be reduced. So these are the some many advantages of having this press uh, in the last in post barrier. Yes. 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 So then uh, if you see this as a as comparison between the water and the uh, press. Uh, if we take dilution factor 2.5, uh, 2.5, then we end the 12 percent consensus, then we need around 9.8 meter per ton of wash water. If we take the press, then uh, for the same dilution factor 2.5, then we need only 4.6 meter per ton of water. Almost 50 percent of this hot water consumption is less in the, com in the press compared to this washer. Whereas if we take the washing efficiency, if we take this same dilution factor 2.5, then the, your washing efficiency also it will be around more than 90 percent in the press. If we take around 9 point, more than 9 meters per ton of only, that you can able to reach below 90 percent of this washing efficiency in the water. And another important is that the very this is also one of the important that if we take about the small variation in the water, 10 percent to 14 percent, you can see the dilution factor is 0 0.8 to 3.7. But if we take about 2.4, 31% uh, to 33, the variation is 2.4 uh, to 2.4, only 0.2. If it's 3.7 to 0.8, almost more than 3, uh, uh, we should put on the variation. When you have so much variation, what happened? Going to this black uh, solid, solid going to this operator, it will be fluctuate, then bleach plant, uh, the conjunction will be increased, so that's why this, uh, the first solids in the old asset area. So based on this, all the experience, uh, we have made this uh, uh, the standard concept and benchmarking. If we take about cooking plant, normally we have the two uh, digester vessels or we have the three digester vessels. Now the three, three digester vessels based on the production. When, when, you are, when you are going to produce this more production, then you can go for this uh, three digester vessel, they depending upon the production. Otherwise, the two digester vessels is enough. If we talk about this benchmarking, we have this uh, cooking yield almost similar to this Bagas and Mista, 50, uh, 50 to 51 percent, and Kappa number also 12 to 14. But if we take about the uh, MPC, that is uh, almost uh, 1.5 to 1.7 tons per ton of flow pump. That is one of the major concern for hardwood fiber. If we talk about uh, wood handling for wood, wood based with a soft wood or hardwood pulp, we need only 0 0.7, but whereas here we are talking about 1.7. Almost one ton steam is required more in the onward fiber. So this is one major concern that we are working on that. Now we have some uh, new development that is also in the under uh, pilot trial. So with this new techniques, we can able to reach one ton, almost 0.7 tons of steam per ton of can be reduced. That we can able to share it later on once we metabolize it. Second, one of the second major issue is that the lower black liquor concentration. If we take annual fiber, we have only this 10.5 to 11, uh, 11 percent concentration. Whereas, if we take about the wood process, we have this concentration 17 to 18 percent. So, here always in uh, annual fiber, we have the very lower concentration. So, for that, immediately what we can do that, uh, you can consider this uh, de super heater. If we take about this uh, dice of cooking process, we need only 6.5 to 7 water in the digester, non fiber. And whereas we have this 10.5 to 11 bar uh, steam pressure. So considering the small equipment, this super heater, and maintain that uh, pressure around 8 to uh, 8 to 8.5 bar, then you can able to uh, reduce a lot of condensate in the uh, digester. 
So when you are reducing the condensate generation in the dry stuff, then you can equip it to slightly improve the uh, black liquid concentration that will save a lot of uh, steam in the operator. That will really be able to some oxygen if you are not having the beach operator in the uh, anode coating process. But still we are working under some other concept, bring it to up to 16% bubble concentration. If we take about the standard concept for uh, fiber line, we uh, normally, based, now based on this lot of experience in the, uh, all over the world, so this is the concept we are proposing for animal fire, whether this is or uh, Bagas. We should have this after cooking process, we should have the sand rippler, because if in any uh, more sand comes, then the sand separator, it will remove this uh, big, stone, uh, big stones, and that will be taken to this uh, sand separator, so that will be part of the importance of the sand separator. That is also uh, we should think about. You can remove, you can remove this uh, silica or sand in the sand traps or cleaners, but everything is going to this uh, one correction bit, but we are reusing the system, but we are not partying out this uh, silica. Again, it is a in the system. For what we can do that, for that we can have some small equipment called a uh, sand separator. So whatever you are collecting this spill liquor from this uh, cleaning washing module, that will be taken to this cleaner. The dumping from this uh, sand uh, cleaners or sand wrap, that can be taken to the sand separator. So then, the uh, sand separator means like uh, inclined screw conveyor, in, uh, it comes in the collection box. So then, for sand, everything can purge out. The clear water can take to the system. So that is also, it will be reduced this wear out and it can reduce the, increase the skin best of life. So after the sand filter, you can go for this uh, uh, washing once you washing system. So you can remove this, uh, when you have this better washing before screen room, you can reduce this uh, dissolved solids before entering to this uh, uh, screening process that will reduce the viscosity also. Then you can have this better screening, screening room, uh, cleaning or uh, screening in the screen room. After that, you can have so one more washing, the screening for increasing the consistency. And before oil, you can have the press, mm -hmm. then you can increase the consistency and maintain the uniform consistency to the oil system. Then after oil, you can have the full set post oil system. Then you can go for three states or four states of bleaching frequency. Normally, this three state bleaching frequency is set up D0, EOP, and D1. But if you want to have higher brightness, more than 88, then you can go for the four state bleaching frequency. But for annual fiber, I think this is 85, 80, 85 to 88 degrees Celsius. 88, 88 brightness is okay. So you can have a three-state bleaching frequency. We we'll take about this benchmarking. But uh, normally the beast straw, it's a little bit, uh, little bit uh, difficult to reach 88, but normally we have 85 to plus or minus 1. But we, Bagas, we can able to reach uh, easily 88 brightness. But if we take about this uh, chemical consumption for uh, both beast straw and Bagas, almost in similar, similar level. And then if we take about hot water consumption completely with the press based system, it will be required only 10 to 11 meters per ton of pulse. The power consumption will be around 260 kilowatt per hour per ton of pulse. Then the bleach plant deployment will be 8 to 9 meters per ton of pulse, both acid and alkaline. So, in this sense, the presentation, thank you very much for your interest.